Hey, what's up guys? This is Purple Serve Life Sports and I'm back here for another NBA video and this is going to be my post NBA draft video. So the draft was, I think it was uh, four days ago. Uh, the draft really didn't go unexpectedly. I think everything went as expected. Zion Williamson did go number one. John Morant did go number two. Actually, Zion Williamson went number one to the Pelicans. John Morant went number two to the Memphis Grizzlies and RJ Barrett went number three to the New York Knicks. The top three picks were pretty much. It was a pretty. It was a foregone conclusion that those three were going to be picked first. Those two young gentlemen right there. Now after that, it wasn't to me. The draft went according to plan because I think everybody, especially even after the trades, because there's like 17 draft day trades I heard, which was it's either 11 or 17, which is actually a record on draft night. So teams were trading around getting different picks picking picks for picking uh different players for those teams so excuse me anyway and it, that's just how it went but to me draft day was really cool in the sense that i was really impressed with how the new orleans pelicans really came away with the post anthony davis trade because they were making different moves to surround their new superstar the young actually he's he's a rookie he's not really a superstar yet i think you got to play your way into that but Right now, they they're surrounding Zion Williamson with different players. They got him a front court partner in Jackson Hayes out of Texas, who blocks shots. He's very he's very athletic as well, not not as athletic as Zion, but he can get up there too. He can dunk it. He blocks a lot of shots. He runs up and down the floor. So, to me, those two in the front court as the power forward and center, it's gonna be it's gonna be epic watching them run up and down the court. It just remains to be seen because we'll probably see that more in the summer league before the NBA because rookies usually play in the summer league, which is the summer league is actually really cool to watch besides the WNBA basketball. But the summer league is going to be really great. I do like how they also got Nikhil Alexander Walker. They had the number four pick, but they traded DeAndre Hunter, who was picked number four, to the Atlanta Hawks, even though they traded that, they got that pick from the Lakers. I don't think they really liked their options necessarily because they didn't want to. I think uh, draft someone too high. So I think that was actually a good pick for them. Just trading away that pick. They're trying to get a lot of assets. And it should, they really impressed me with that pick. I think they drafted Nikhil Alexander Walker with the, I think it was the 17th pick of the draft. He's a point guard, but he can, he's a point guard, excuse me, but he can actually be a shooting guard as well because they do have Drew Holiday in New Orleans still. So I like how. To me, just this draft was really about how the new Pelicans GM was just going to really surround Zion Williamson, make make pick great players, and that this is going to help them approach free agency and what they're going to do. Are they going to get younger? Are they going to get more veterans to play? Because to me, as just because the Western Conference is open because the Warriors are are injured doesn't mean. You're, you're still a surefire to get into the playoffs because of how many great teams now have a chance to make it. So that much is to watch out for. Uh, <clears throat> also want to talk about this. I didn't get to talk much about the Anthony Davis trade, but the Anthony Davis trade was great in, in the part that the Lakers got who they wanted. They got LeBron, a partner, who can who's just a great basketball player. Anthony Davis plays both ways. He's a great shot blocker. He's a great rebounder. He can score. You can score with the best of them. My thing is, is that while I like what they did, what's what what kind of what kind of concerns me about LA is that they want to keep, they want to buy, they want to get another superstar. The reason I don't think they really need another superstar is because they have a lot of, they have still young talent, even though the young talent is probably just Kyle Kuzma now. But if you really kind of spread that cap out amongst different players who can contribute. I think what you can do is you can find you can build a, a, a team, like a real team. Because if you have three superstars, but well, guess what? Your depth is compromised because you have to mostly you're playing those three superstars together, right? And then when one guy leaves, you have to or two guys leave, you're leaving one on the court at one time with different players who are usually minimum players, minimum veterans who are either at the end of their prime or they're not very great. <clears throat> or they're just great at one thing. While I understand why they would want to do that with LeBron because LeBron's actually pretty good with players on minimum contracts, is that if you build your team, you know, with players who are like worth five million, you know, five million like that, three million here, if you're paying like a small price here and there instead of paying just the minimum just to build a bench out, 
then you're going to have players who can do multiple things and play two way. Even though nowadays shooting is a premium, so you play you pay a lot of players who can shoot. But man, I would like it if the Lakers would actually prioritize building a team because the the superstar thing, while it does work. Golden State to me is a great example of this. You are cash strapped and you don't have many options because they paid DeMarcus Cousins the, their mid level tax, so they couldn't really find another great bench member or or basically give that out to two more players instead of a guy like in DeMarcus Cousins who did get injured eventually. Kevin Durant tore his Achilles, Clay Thompson tore his ACL. Now they're left with, do they want to sign Kevin Durant, retain Clay Thompson? Do they want to retain those guys, which they which they do? I, I, I know why they do, because they still believe they can win a championship once those guys get healthy. It's just to me, <clears throat> if you're building a team, it's you got to spread the wealth everywhere. you got to be able to have different players who can do different things. you got to have play, players who can just play two-way. LeBron can play the point guard. He can play the small forward. He can play power forward. You have Kyle Kuzma, who I'm a huge fan of. If you really build around Kyle Kuzma, LeBron, and Anthony Davis, to me, that's not a bad combination right there. That can win a championship to me. It's just what pieces do you put around that? That's why, to me, what what New Orleans did is great because... Sorry about that. As Anthony... I mean, as Zion Williamson develops... You got all these young pieces around who will develop as well. They're going to be building something special down in New Orleans. And if these guys are developing fast and quick, which I think they will, because to me, all these guys look like they they work hard, they play hard, they love to play basketball. You got Drew Holiday, who's a great player. Now it's just really about filling around those around those guys because guess what? Now you have cap space. This is why it's a great thing for New Orleans to have moved on from Anthony Davis because if you give him the supermax, guess what? You're cash strapped. You don't. You, there's a lot of money you're paying to players. Anthony Davis, you pay that money. But guess what? If you don't have him now, you draft young. You get younger. You you kind of spread everything out. Guess what? Now, sorry about that. Now you can pay all these players, man. This is great. What the what the New Orleans Pelicans did. I'm so I'm very impressed. It's the superstar thing still works. But guess what? You, the money, the money. There isn't much money to go on, which is why I see why the NBA does this. Why they have the draft, and they also have you have good teams, you have bad teams. Bad teams build through the draft, but good teams have a lot of good players, right? But here's the thing: the bad teams stay bad because they don't want to. Uh, you see, they're bad at developing, or they're bad at getting or attracting players, right? The good teams are only good, but then they pan out. Why? Because players get older, and then contracts, and then you have less money to go around, which is why teams fall off hard. This is why good teams fall off hard. The Golden State's not really falling off hard. It's just right now they're having they drafted three good players in Jordan Poole, who I like a lot. Actually, after looking at him, I didn't like the pick at first because I thought there you could have drafted Bull Bull, but I like the pick because he's a shooter. There's another guy that they drafted who was on their. Uh, NBA G League team who's a really good player to Europe and then they drafted somebody else Golden State has to kind of build through the draft in a certain way that they they're they're using lower picks which is not great if you're trying to get talent and people are injured so it's a it's a flip side to the superstar to the rebuilding thing that that I'm actually seeing I like what New Orleans is doing because to me this is how you really build a really good team but in the future Guess what? Because you you have so many good young players, you're going to have to pay those players. Is there enough money to go around? We don't know. Even though the cap is rising every year, it's not rising to the point where you can just put a whole bunch of players under the cap. So, But before I end this video, I just want to say that, you know, it is it is in the NBA, it's hard to build good teams. It's hard mm-hmm. to maintain good teams. I mean, look at Golden State. They're such a great team, but it's it's hard to maintain them because they're so good. you got to pay them all because, guess what? Contracts expire. Draymond Green's up next, next year. So, <sighs> Golden State's got got a lot of decisions to make. So, guys got to watch out for that. But, um, it's going to do it for this video. This is my post-draft NBA video. This is for Stream Live Sports. Thank you guys for listening. This is my breakdown on the NBA draft. In my next video, though, I will be doing... uh, This is going to be my pre-free agency preview for you guys. Because guess what? Free agency this year, even though Kevin Durant's injured, you still got big free agents. Wherever Kevin Durant goes is going to be huge. 
because it has implications on how you're going to how you look at your championship chances whether he stays in the west or goes to the east which is looking like he might go to an east conference team so in my next video i'm going to tell you guys all about that what i'm hearing in other free agency news that's going to be it's kind of a huge impact so thank you guys for listening it's purpose drive live sports and i'll see you guys in my next video